Okay, so I'm really happy to welcome to the show today uh, Justin uh, Kalifowitz. He's the co-founder of uh, SongTrust. Uh, it's uh, absolutely a pleasure to have him on, on the show today. So hi, Justin, and thanks for joining me. Hey, how are you? Uh, good, thanks. All good, you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, no problem. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. I, I wanted to start with uh, your background. I think that's important for people to understand where you're coming from and how the idea for SongTrust came about. So, so how did you start out? Sure. Um, basically, I've been uh, in the music business for as long as I can remember. I uh, managed bands in high school and uh, worked at record companies right after high school, worked at Virgin and RCA. And uh, then when I was 19, I learned about music publishing. Yeah. And uh, it was a fascinating topic to me. It was this close to sort of origination of a song, you know, working with the people who actually write the songs. Um, sometimes they're artists, sometimes they're songwriters. It was really fascinating um, to learn about this topic, and I spent, you know, the next uh, 11 years working in the in the largely traditional music publishing business. I worked uh, at a company called Spirit Music uh, for seven years, where we looked after really interesting catalogs like Bob Marley's catalog and Lou Reed and Chaka Khan, um, and then started Downtown Music Publishing in 2007, uh, which is a much more diverse uh, roster of songwriters and and producers and artists and catalogs and. Um, some of the folks we work with are artists like Santa Gold and Neon Trees and Motley Crue and the Kinks and the portion of Ann Morrison's catalog and yeah. um, a really diverse, diverse catalog. And one of the things that kept coming back to me uh, while I was work working in the traditional music publishing business is that this space, uh, which has been growing over the past 10 years, has really been off limits to most songwriters. Like you have to earn a certain amount of money um, or have some traditional uh, metrics of success before most traditional music publishers would give songwriters and artists a look. And over the past decade, at the same time that I was coming up in the music publishing business, this whole DIY movement emerged where there were millions of songwriters and artists out there who were creating music on their own, um, distributing it on their own, using marketing and, and tools on their own, getting tours, doing everything that they could on their own, sometimes even with indie labels, but still not generating enough traditional metrics of success to uh, really attract the attention of a music publisher and leaving a lot of royalties on the table. Of course. And over time, we, we kind of thought, there's got to be a way. And um, we kept thinking about different ways in which we could create a platform for, song, for songwriters and artists to collect these royalties. And uh, in 2010, we came up with this idea that we decided to call Song Trust and have been going at it ever since. Uh, it's a very unique situation for you as well because uh, you, know, you maintain your position uh, at uh, Downtown and, and you also um, are the co-founder of Song Trust. So how Absolutely. do you, how do you yeah. wear these two different hats, uh, um, so to speak? Hire amazing staff. Like we have the greatest teams on both businesses, you yeah. know, and, they're, and, and they really are um, at the core, they're very similar businesses and that they're both rights management businesses, but at the same time, they each provide very different services to the types of folks who sign up. Of course, of course. And uh, well, one thing that's uh, su super interesting for me is uh, uh, how did you decide what were the skeleton features of Song Trust that you needed to have to launch? Because there's so many sides to music publishing and different features that you can offer, different things you can do. But uh, there must sure. have come a point when you were thinking about launching the service where you thought, well, uh, this is uh, uh, what we absolutely need in order to be able to launch. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I remember the original incarnation of, of our thinking was we threw up everything on the board that music publishers do and really started to look at what was scalable and what wasn't. What could you offer to thousands of songwriters and artists versus what could you offer to uh, a selected group of songwriters and artists. And that's yeah. sort of the, the primary difference. And we sort of looked at it like, you know, how can we create you know, a piece of software that, that um, our users can can log in and uh, and really kind of manage this on their own, you know, with, with our assistance and us putting deals in place and uh, creating relationships whereby it makes the process of collecting royalties as easy as possible. And, and though there are many facets to music publishing, there were, there were two pieces that we really ho honed in on. Um, the first one was royalty collection. Yeah. Um, let's, let's give up artists at all levels the opportunity to be part of these global collection organizations that, that collect these rights and where possible do direct deals to collect royalties on behalf of our songwriters. 
and uh, an artist. And then the second piece was education. Like, how do we educate you on, on all the many facets of, uh, of what a songwriter's career looks like so that you can take as much advantage of, of the software that we've built as possible? Yeah, yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the collection societies. So that, that's a really important part of your service. And uh, the interesting thing is that you're not only limited to U.S. songwriters, but you have uh, other partnerships as well. So that gives uh, songwriters really a... a a more global reach and, and the ability to be able to collect rights from uh, different countries without being signed to a major. Yeah, I mean, and that's been one of the things that was always sort of, you know, grappling for so many songwriters and artists is that, you know, the, the, the system in America is obviously very different than um, the system overseas. And, and most people actually don't know that. And in music publishing, if you're in the publishing industry, you just know that that's sort of the case, you know, yeah. but folks who are, are, you know, emerging songwriters and artists and doing everything to uh to further their careers if you go online and try to learn about music publishing there's almost no real actionable information yeah. there's like it's really hard or you know the other advice is oh don't do anything and when it's valuable enough uh someone will help you sell it to a major publisher or someone <laughs> will come along and manage it for you for a fee and to me i mean i couldn't get over the number of songwriters and artists out there who are generating meaningful revenue you know sometimes it's hundreds of dollars sometimes it's thousands sometimes it's tens of thousands of dollars and just leaving it on the table because there's no easy solution for them to go and collect it so that was kind of where 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 we we honed in on, on the idea was to to try to solve for that one particular problem and you know i mean the thing about music publishing when you think about the business is that even the name is wrong you know it's a holdover from a hundred years ago and when, when p folks in our industry pressed sheet music and that's why it was called music publishing but today it's true truly rights management and royalty collection. You know, that's that's the crux of it. And and I think we, you know, we confuse people even by calling the business music publishing uh, as an industry. The service is kind of a, a, a fee-based fee service in terms of, you know, it's a, it's a, a pay-as-you-go type uh, sure. deal. Uh, so how does it work in terms of uh, different tiers? Uh, how can people start out and then maybe uh, expand their repertoire and, and, and you know, the reach of, of what you do for them as they go along? Sure. Yeah, there's two fee structures on right now. There's going to be a third that we're introducing in a few weeks. And basically, and I'll talk about them, you know, in, the, in that vein, in the three that we're going to have, there's basically a, uh, a basic package, a standard package, and what we're calling a, a pro package. Um, the, the largely the differences between them are um, the number of writers. So if you have, if you're just a solo songwriter, you can sign up for the basic package. But if you're in a band, you all want to sign up together. Um, you yeah. can go for the standard or the pro package. We don't want to penalize folks and charge, you know, each writer in the band, like, you know, a certain fee when, when you're only writing your songs together. So we're really trying to solve for that problem. Like if you of think course. about the Internet and the way in which um, DIY services have been created, nobody ever really thinks about the unit of, as being a songwriter. They all think about the unit as being a band. Um, so we had to solve for the differences between bands and songwriters. Yeah. Um, the differences in the services include... Um, uh, U.S. collection versus international collection. For example, uh, a lot of our songwriters based here in the States uh, don't distribute their music outside of the States. They're, they've just chosen, um, you know, they're only using like iTunes U.S. and some of the services here. Uh, so we, we created a package that was for them. And then for the folks who are, you know, distributing their music worldwide and having, um, you know, meaningful sales where there's royalties to be collected, uh, we offer the pro package that allows them to opt into all of those territories. Yeah. Uh, there's also some additional features you know around sync licensing with respect to uh, papering sync licenses that come in and helping negotiate helping folks come up with different fee structures uh, around that there's a pitching component uh, that we've partnered with downtown sync licensing business dms that uh, the standard and premium members can opt in to uh, to uh, submit their music to the dms sync library yeah um, which has deals in place with you know dozens of of production companies out there the folks that don't do individual deals for each particular song they use in their show they just pre-clear buckets of music um, from all the publishers to be used in their show so we allow folks entree into into that part of the business as well which has largely been off limits to to emerging and independent songwriters yeah absolutely yeah. it's uh, it's uh, certainly something that uh, songwriters uh, feel like it's a very remote uh, or removed uh, component of of you know, mm -hmm. trying to get your songs out there. Uh, there are initiatives, uh, I'm sure, uh, South by Southwest and Medium and various conferences that uh, kind of try and bring home the idea that actually pitching a song for a show is not something that only people signed to a major publisher can do. But the perception is, is that still for the majority of people. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's so little information available on the process of sync licensing in uh, in um, available for you know for for bands and songwriters and artists to look at. Yeah, and I think that you know one thing that so many folks hone in on is like we're going to try to get our music on Grey's Anatomy uh, or this Big Fox feature film or get our song in an iTunes commercial. And that's all well and good, but that only represents, you know, maybe four or five percent of the sync licensing. I don't know the exact numbers out there, but yeah. there's so many other different facets of sync licensing available to songwriters and artists that, you know, they, they mostly ignore and they don't really look at look at ways. And, and I think what we're trying to do is really shed some light on all of those different opportunities that are available via Song Trust, as well as the ones um, that they can handle on their own. And one of the things we'll be introducing in 2012 um, to that effect is a license my music badge that enables songwriters and artists to uh, actually self license and it, they don't need to, to the help of a lawyer. They don't need any of these things. It's an actual um, application that, that sits alongside a buy my music on iTunes or share, um, you know, my music on Facebook or, or uh, follow me on Twitter. It'll sit right there. If people are interested in licensing their music, they can go right ahead and click a button. It's an automated process. It's pre cleared. That's amazing. And, uh, do you feel like that's a direction that the industry will take in the next sort of uh, four or five years? Uh, I, I think that there's always going to be the Fortune 500 company licensing a song, a very recognizable song by a very well-known artist um, to help push their brand forward. I think they're also going to be working more and more um, with songwriters at all levels and artists at all levels. Um, but the key is, I think what as an industry we need to do is really make uh, licensing an easier process. It's an impossible process right now, and yeah. it's why so much innovation isn't happening in the music business. Yeah. Um, and why many, even though there's been a lot of investment in the music business in 2011, I think there would be even more investment in the music business if licensing wasn't so complicated. Yeah. So, you know, while there's a tremendous amount of thought and opinion being spread around about how you license major label repertoire and major published repertoire, uh, well-known songs and the like. There's very little attention given to how you license everyone who's sort of off the grid. And our whole concept with Song Trust is to bring all of the songwriters and artists in the world onto the licensing grid. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, there are so many music uh, startups out there. I've covered a, a load of them. There are many, many more that I haven't covered yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's very few uh, bar, almost none, that deal with the publishing in the way that you do. Uh, do you think it's because, like, in the same way that artists are sometimes confused when they start out about, uh, most of the time confused about publishing, how it works, uh, in the same way you need, you need it really to be somebody from the inside to be able to, to spearhead uh, a change of this kind, uh, uh, an evolution of the publishing business uh, in this direction? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that when you, there's so many sort of places where um, publishing has its own unique way, you know, and it doesn't really correspond to the way the record business works. And, you know, a long time ago, someone told me when I was just starting to learn about music publishing that uh, you can get through your whole career in the music business and not know anything about music publishing. But if you just understand music publishing, uh, you'll understand the whole music business. And I thought that was really interesting because there's no facet of the music business that isn't affected by the rules and regulations associated with copyright and what music publishers do on a day-to-day -day basis. But to your point, there are so few people who understand those rules. And publishing has been such a great business for so many people. I mean, the investment that's gone into the music publishing space, though it's not really reported on, it's amazing. I mean, just look at the other week with EMI splitting up in two and publishing selling for, you know, $300 million more than the, than the recorded music business. I think 10 years ago, people would have looked at you and said, you're crazy if you think that would, that would ever happen. Yeah. Uh, and it did. So, you know, I think I think our experience in trying to change this business and offering a solution to people who were previously thought of as too small uh, to offer a solution to has been that you absolutely need a, a, a tremendous background in music publishing. And not only do you need to understand how it works, uh, you need to have relationships on a global level uh, with folks who are willing to uh, adopt different rules uh, for this for this new subset of songwriters who've never been on the grid before.
Absolutely, yeah, that's that's what you need. Relationships are, are the basis, really, of uh, a lot of the music publishing business. And and that, that brings me to another question I had on, on competition, because um, uh, a company like TuneCore, for example, early, earlier this month introduced a service that uh, kind of... Uh, uh, is on the footsteps of what you, of what you guys are doing. It's you know not comparable exactly, but uh, it's kind of going in that direction. And, and do you feel like uh, there is space for a few different companies to come into the space and, and and try and do their own type of innovation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that you know competition is a good thing. It raises the bar. It raises the attention that uh, you know this this gets. You know, um, companies like TuneCore and others have have really big audiences, and and they're going to listen to uh, this idea. And I think that, that for us, you know, educating the community about this opportunity is, is, you know, the most important thing for our business, you know, and for, for the sector is to educate, you know, this growing DIY community about the opportunities that exist to, you know, earn real revenue and, and use publishing and their rights as an opportunity to promote and grow their careers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, one thing that's super exciting for UK artists, uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm based in London most of the time. So, uh, is that actually um, in, the, in the last few months you've allowed UK artists to actually join uh, Song Trust and uh, be able to collect royalties from the US collection agencies. And, and that's something that uh, up to now has been incredibly hard for them to do. Yeah, we're looking at different solutions, you know, for, for different countries all over the world. I mean, that's the thing. There was, uh, you know, the CEO of Pandora, Joe Kennedy, who, who had said once that, you know, um, the great thing about the internet is that it's global, but but copyright is local, you know, and the rules and regulations in each territory are so vastly different that, you know, we're as fast as we can, we're creating, you know, unique sites for um, all the major territories around the world yeah. to both explain to folks who live in countries like the UK, Germany, France, Japan, Australia, um, what the opportunities are globally, um, and separately explain to, to songwriters what the opportunities are in each of those unique territories and, and how they're different from each other and what the revenue streams are, what the top earners are, the timelines associated with it. I mean, the timelines associated with collecting traditional music publishing royalties range from as quick as three months to as long as 18 months. Yeah. And, you know, we're working to try to expedite that and, and really provide a tremendous amount of visibility and clarity on, uh, on what's going on. That's great. And uh, do you find the collection societies to be fairly open to this kind of uh, discussion and this kind of innovation or or yeah. some more open than others? You know, it's interesting. We have had a, a really great relationship with all the collection societies that we've been dealing with. They've been open and, and, and really into it. And I think that um, in a general sense, uh, other folks have, who have approached them with their own ideas of what they want to do have um, maybe have been a bit scary. Uh, but the fact that we are also coming, we're born, Songtress is born out of a very reputable music publishing company that's, you know, one of, of the course. top independent music publishers in the world. So uh, we deal with them uh, in, in their very traditional business. And, you know, we've really uh, done everything we can to accommodate, you know, all of their concerns and, and ensure them that, you know, this was going to be managed in a professional way and that this wasn't, you know, going to be done uh, in any way that would sort of compromise a, a system that's working for them. But, you know, as I always point out to anyone I speak to about this is that the music publishing industry right now works, you know, for the top five percent of songwriters really you know it yep. doesn't the system as it is doesn't really work for the other 95 percent who you know are earning what i always argue is some number under twenty thousand dollars if you're earning less than twenty thousand dollars a year the traditional music publishing business is not that interested even though it might help you buy a new van or a new amp or new guitars or pay to fund your next record or uh whatever it is you know there's there's real revenue out there for lots of folks and, and we're really trying to solve to help them uh, collect every penny that they're owed yeah yeah, that's that's great, and uh, you know uh, I think it's it's uh, incredibly important that the work you're doing in in getting the word out there. First of all, um, I appreciate that, and then th do. thank you for helping. <laughs> ah, that's cool. No problem. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, the so best places to actually find Song Trust will be the website, which is songtrust.com. Uh, and there's a lot of documentation on there in terms of, uh, you know, about press cuttings, um, frequently asked questions and all that sort of stuff. So if, if you guys, uh, listeners, need to look at uh, more material and understand a bit more about how this works, uh, then head to the uh, website at songtrust.com. And also you're on Twitter. So that's at songtrust. Is that right? That's right. Perfect. Well, uh, you know, it was absolutely great having you on the show and I uh, look forward to seeing uh, how, how the company is going to evolve in the next uh, few months. Great. Thanks so much for having me on.